Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. The breaking news tonight is sad. A founding member of one of the most popular music acts of all time has died. Glenn Fry, guitarist and co-founder and co-writer for the Eagles, was just 67 years old and he was, quite simply, a rock star. From the mid-70s to the late 80s, Glenn Fry and the Eagles founder Don Henley wrote and performed songs that virtually defined how the rest of the country saw Southern California, from Tequila Sunrise to the Sunset Boulevard Palm Trees on the double, double album Hotel California that went platinum 16 times over, according to Billboard magazine. Just about everyone I grew up with has a copy or has their collection of Greatest Hits, which is America's best-selling album of the entire 20th century. More copies than the Beatles, Michael Jackson, Elvis, or Sinatra. And Glenn Fry had a chart-topping solo career as well, which is why tonight so many people are walking around with so many tunes stuck in their head and all the feelings they conjure up. We begin tonight with Sarah Seidner at a record store in Hollywood, where it's fair to say they've sold more than a few records that Glenn Fry had a part in. Sarah, what do we know about the circumstances surrounding Fry's death? He was having intestinal problems for quite a while. Um, ultimately, his publicist says he died from complications from rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, and pneumonia. To a lot of people, he was still a young man uh, who had done so much, not just for the Eagles, but for the industry. He was a perfectionist. You talk to anybody who worked with him, and they will tell you there was zero acceptance of mistakes. Everything had to be perfect, and not perfect for him but perfect for the crowd that came to see their concerts. He was the co-founder of the Eagles, and they're playing the music here in Amoeba. This is the largest independent record store uh, in the country. Uh, lots of people here, and you can hear the music, and it really does bring back a lot for a lot of different generations. Anderson, you mentioned having their albums. I remember my mother had them, and I didn't like the music at first. Now I can't get enough of it. So over the years, there are so many people that are heartbroken, and you can tell that from going on social media. Everybody from Huey Lewis to Mike Huckabee has gone on social media, on Twitter, and tweeted about how much Glenn Fry and the Eagles meant to them. Anderson. They were actually supposed to receive the Kennedy Center honors this past December. It got postponed because of his illness, right? That's right. But, you know, this has been a shock to a lot of folks. I mean, first Dave of Bowie, now Glenn Fry. He's meant so much and brought so much, not just, like I said, to the fans, but to everyone in the industry, that a lot of people are like, wait, this is another person? They, they just simply can't believe it. There's a lot of love being shared for him and, of course, the music. Never mind, he was an incredible, incredible musician. He played the keyboards. He played, obviously, the guitar. Uh, he also played the piano, and he co-wrote many of the songs that became huge, huge hits, Anderson. Well, Sarah, thank you very much Sarah, for the update. For all the California mellow that their songs may have evoked, the Eagles were behind the scenes, anything but peaceful or easy. Joining us tonight by phone, Alex Gibney, documentary filmmaker, producer of an amazing documentary called History of the Eagles. Alex, you obviously got to know Glenn well during the making of the documentary. When you heard he died, first of all, what went through your mind? Well, I was shocked. I, I had heard that he had gotten better. I, I, I knew that he had been sick, but I, but, um, but I, was, I was shocked and surprised and greatly saddened. Uh, he was a good guy. And, uh, you know, part of one of the great musical success stories ever. Uh, and now following just a, a few days after David Bowie, it was kind of a, it was a very tough one-two punch. He also just, I mean, seems so honest and willing to kind of go there in the film that you made with him. He was honest. That was one of the things that, that really impressed me about him. And, and when we embarked on the film, you know, uh, he said that he was willing to um, be forthright and to encourage everybody to speak up, whether or not, you know, they got along with the Eagles or not. And the Eagles could be a pretty fractious band, even though their harmonies were the most dulcet, sweet-sounding things ever. Uh, so uh, that was one thing I appreciated a lot about Glenn. He was very forthright and honest. Well, that's one of the amazing moments in, in the documentary that you made, I mean, because you had film of them on stage, and if memory serves me correct, Glenn Fry and one of the other band members are basically having a fight on stage. And Glenn Fry is saying that he's going to, uh, I, don't, I can't use the exact words, I don't think, on television, but yeah. essentially beat <laughs> up. Can't use it. Yeah, you know, he's going to take him out. And, and he's, he's like, right after this song, I'm going to take you out. And he's, he's like, saying that in front of the entire audience. 
in, in front of the entire audience in a sides while they're singing these beautiful harmonies. <laughs> <laughs> it's an incredible moment. And the, and the other band member, actually, as soon as the, the gig was over... Don Felder. Don yeah. Felder ran off the stage, jumped into a, a waiting limousine, and drove away so that he wouldn't get beat up. Yeah. And, and, I mean, just their history of how long they go back with each other, how they all started, is, is extraordinary. And the sort of the ups and downs they had along the way. I mean, sort of how they found their sound, I guess. Yeah, look, Glenn... Started, Glenn and Don Henley started off as the backup band for Linda Ronstadt. Um, and, uh, and at some point, the two of them, I think, decided they wanted to uh, get a band together themselves. And Glenn and Don were the ultimate blue-collar songwriters who were determined to do good. And, and, and they knew, you know, I remember he asked Bob Seger at one point, um, but, but what if I start writing songs? They're going to be bad. He said, yes, they are going to be bad. But over time, they'll get better. Glenn Fry and Don Henley were the ultimate um, practitioners of the idea that if you have a, where there's a will, there's a way. And they, <laughs> with their will, they found a way to being the most... Uh, the best-selling band in the 20th century. And, I mean, that it echoes kind of what Don Henley said in a statement tonight. He described Glenn Fry with a quote, "work ethic that wouldn't quit." I mean, that that really was right. his his secret to, to songwriting to everything. Hard work. Th th that sums him up in a nutshell. Th these guys were really. Uh, Glenn was really all about hard work and a sense of will and determination that if you busted your butt, you could make it someplace. And that someplace would be pretty big. How was it that they kind of found their sound? I mean, it, was it, it wasn't that way from the beginning with them, was it? Well, look, they had a sound early on, and, but it, it took a while for them to be recognized. One of their early producers didn't really get it at first. I mean, Irving Azoff, the famous Irving Azoff, was always their champion. Um, but their sound really had to do with their voices. Uh, you know, they, they, they wanted to play rock and roll, but it was really their sense of harmony and how those voices blended together, not only Don and Glenn, but also Randy Meissner and Bernie Ledden. That was, the, that was the original incarnation of the band. It was those voices together that made this kind of beautiful sound that uh, at a moment when country rock was, um, was coming on strong, uh, really found a, a moment and an audience. And when you think of their legacy, I mean, what, what do you think it is in the canon of rock music? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's twofold. I mean, you can talk about country rock and the culture, country rock sound and Laurel Canyon. I really think it's about the dream, the dream of the rock and roll star. You know, that, that, you, that if you try hard, if you, if you work it night after night after night, you can really get someplace extraordinary. I really think it's all about hard work. It's all about elbow grease, as Glenn Fry said. Well, Alex, I, uh, I, I told you before we went on air, I, uh, I just found your documentary extraordinary. I stumbled across it on television quite by accident, and I was stayed up late into the night watching it because I just thought it was so well done and so fascinating, as is, frankly, all of your work. So thank you for talking to us, Alex. Well, thanks so much, Anderson. Well, more now on the medical side of what happened to Glenn Fry, his battle with a combination of diseases that collectively strike tens of millions of Americans. For that, as always, we turn to our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. So Glenn Fry died from complications due to a number of illnesses, rheumatoid arthritis being one of them. Is that normally fatal in and of itself? I hadn't heard of that. Now, yeah, I, I wouldn't typically think, and I don't, I don't think most people think of it as a sort of terminal or, or, or fatal disease, although it can be something that can shorten one's lifespan. I think that's how a lot of rheumatologists who are doctors that's, that specialize in this area think about it. I think when you think about this, this is an autoimmune disease. Your body, for whatever reason, is, is sort of attacking itself. It can attack the joints, which is what most people think of when they think of arthritis. That's why your joints, your knuckles may get large, uh, your other joints, your knees, your hips, elbows, everything can be affected by this. But it can also affect blood vessels, for example, blood vessels around your heart. And it can cause uh, those types of symptoms where you're not getting enough blood flow to the heart, for example, or to the lungs. 
We don't know specifically what was going on there, but that, that is some of the other effects of rheumatoid arthritis that can lead to an earlier death. And then another complicating factor is said to be acute ulcerative colitis. What's that? Yeah. Well, ulcerative colitis is another type of autoimmune disease. In this case, it affects the, the gut, the GI tract, the, the large intestine specifically. And um, again, when they said acute ulcerative colitis, it can mean a significant flare-up of inflammation uh, that could even cause um, rupture of the wall of the intestine, that can cause bleeding, you know, that, that all, all these are the sorts of things that can sometimes lead to an earlier death. Now, I should point out, these are also diseases that can be very easily managed as well. I shouldn't say easily, but well managed as well uh, by simply uh, not letting the immune system create as much damage in the joints or in the gut. But the medications can be tough uh, on somebody. So uh, was this a problem with the medications? Was this a problem with the disease for Glenn Fry, uh, we don't know. We just know that in combination, these diseases and the treatment for his diseases, they're saying, led to his early death. And also pneumonia, which is obviously a danger for anyone who's immunocompromised. Right, so, so when someone has autoimmune disease, one of the ways that you try and treat it is to tamp down the immune system. The immune system's overacting, so let's decrease it a bit. But exactly what you said, when you decrease the immune system a bit, you leave someone more vulnerable to infections. Your immune system can't fight those infections, and that can be a real problem. And I mean, what an extraordinary life and extraordinary talent but to die. I mean, 67 years old, it's so young. It, 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 is, it is young, and, and I think there's a lot of people who, who may be watching saying, look, I, you know, I have autoimmune disease or it's in my family. Again, it can be a disease that's, that is well managed. It can shorten people's lives. I mean, that has been well described, uh, but, but you're absolutely right. In his case, it's, it's, uh, he, I mean, he does seem very young, and mm. my understanding was it was even active up until recently. Mm. Uh, Sanjay, thanks very much. You got it. Thank you, Anderson. Well, just ahead.